Hi, it's me, Jazzy. I'm back with another tech-related video, and today I'm taking a look at something that's been sent in by AliExpress. Now, they've very kindly sent me over this DC bench power supply. So I'll be taking a look at that in a moment. The further good news is I've got some codes for AliExpress to share with you. So if you want to save money on whatever you're shopping for at AliExpress, be sure to check out the video description down below for the latest batch of AliExpress codes that I've got for you. Plus, AliExpress back to school blowout has started with many products up to 80% off, plus my exclusive discount codes you'll find below. You can also get up to 10% cash back, check the video description for details, or just scan the QR code. Right, now, We've talked about saving money. Let's talk about DC bench power supplies. So let's get this one over on the bench and check it out. Right, here we go. So this is a DC power supply, as we can see. It's a dual channel power supply. And with this, I can get 60 volts at five amps or 120 volts at five amps or 60 volts at 10 amps. So this is gonna be a pretty useful power supply. So there's various different modes on this. Okay, let's have a look. Right, we got some instructions here. That's always a good thing. So here's our first glimpse at the panel. So you can see, got two separate channels on there. On the back, the specification here. So the one we got is the SPS 605 2KD, which does 0 to 60 volts in independent mode, 0 to 120 volts in series mode, and 0 to 60 volts in parallel mode. Current wise, we've got 0 to 5 amps in independent or series, and 0 to 10 in parallel. And you've got different output modes here that you can select. All right, so we've got our instructions here, which all seems pretty straightforward stuff. Ah, we've got a warranty card, nice. Okay, let's have a look at this power supply then. So it comes with various leads. So we've got a standard kettle lead here with the UK plug on it, perfect. Good to see. Uh, we've got some banana to crocky clips here. Oh, so we've got more as well. I've got another set of these, have we? Yeah, another set of the same. Banana to crocky clips. Down in the bottom here, we've got a USB out to two crock clips because you can do that as well with this power supply. So let's get this out so we can have a better look. Certainly well packed. Right, let me get the plastic off so we can have a better look at this. Oh, so we've got dual fans on the back. You can see that straight away. We've got dual fans there. This is indeed the SPS 605 2KD. So we've got various warnings on here. Use it under professional guidance. Non-professionals are not allowed to use it alone. Okay, I think we're well covered here. Right, so it's very nice looking power supply. We've got our dis dual displays here. We'll power it up in a minute. So we've got channel one here, channel two, and you can see we've got our five volt two amp there. Output wires on the front, we've got channel one, channel two, series and parallel. Okay, power button. You've got your three mode buttons there and four rotary encoders. So it looks very nicely made. You get a glimpse at the internals through the vents on the side there. Looks pretty nice, it's a decent size as well. Just to give you an idea on size, there's a much smaller single power supply. All right, so let's prepare our kettle lead and we can do some testing with this. Let's see what we can get out of it. Right, let's plug in and let's go for power up. Nice display. I like the white LEDs. That's very nice. Very clear seven segment displays. Volts, amps and watts and a press of the rotary encoder will change which digit you're changing. So you can do your course or fine adjustment. And of course we can go up to 60 on this. And we've got our modes down here, independent, series, 
And there you go, you can hear the relay click inside and parallel mode. It's really nice that it sorts that out for you. I think this is going to be a very useful bit of kit. Probably time to take the peel off. Nice, always satisfying. So one thing to note about this power supply is it doesn't have a separate output switch for each channel. So once you switch the main power button on, it's on. So whatever's set on this channel is going to come out of this channel. As you see, if I put my meter on and press the power button here, it goes straight to 60 volts. It's putting out 60 volts. So just one thing to bear in mind. So we're in independent mode at the moment, so we're putting out 60 volts on this channel and we should be putting out 60 volts on this channel. Which we are. Fantastic. Yeah, so in independent mode, I can get 60 volts at 5 amps. So what we've also got is a series and a parallel mode. Now, they've given you a dedicated set of outputs here for series and parallel mode. So if you hook up to those, if I hook up to those and we're in independent mode, there won't be anything coming out of it. If I switch to series, there we go. So it'll now give me up to 120 volts at 5 amps, which is actually very useful. I think this is going to be great for all sorts of stuff. One little detail, maybe it's just my OCD, but the display defaults to this side and your outputs are over here. To me, it would have made more logical sense for the display to switch to over here because that's the set of outputs that you're using. Maybe that's just me. So if I switch to parallel mode, hear the relay clunk, and now I can get 60 volts at 10 amps. Now that's gonna be pretty handy, being able to get 10 amps out of this. We're gonna test this in a minute. We're gonna load it up and we're gonna test the output from this and put it through its paces. So there you go, so independent mode, got two channels there 60 volts at 5 amps series mode I can get 120 volts at 5 amps and parallel mode I can get 60 volts at 10 amps very nice there's also a USB 5 volt 2 amp output there which is not controllable it just puts out 5 volts 2 amps but I guess if you want to charge something up Quite handy for that. Always handy to have a, a front facing five volt USB output for something. You never know when that will come in handy for char just charging something up, anything. The other thing to note is as with a lot of these modern power suppliers, the voltage control is on the right. For some reason I'm used to it on the left. That's because most of my power supplies are really ancient. And you've got these rotary encoders, which is quite nice. Just a press moves the digit along. It's really simple to use you just got one on off three different modes three sets of outputs these are quite a nicety it just seems to me that when you switch to this mode that the display would be nice if the display defaulted to this side because that's the connections you're going to use if i switch to series and i'm still on channel one i'm getting 60 volts so i, I guess if i go to channel two i'm going to get 60 volts all right, so if I go to the series and parallel output, yeah, it gives me the full 120. All right, which you could you could just do that, to be honest, and get the 120. You could do it either way works for me. So when you go into parallel mode and you hook up, you get your 60 volts at 10 amps. So I presume I'd also get 60 volts here, yeah, and nothing here yeah fair enough so if you went across the two there yeah you're still getting your 60 volts so you can yeah you can do it either way either way works that's quite convenient i guess it's a nice looking power supply it looks the part the display is great we've got a couple of nice big fans on the back there so I reckon what we need to do now is load it up and give it a bit of a good old test.
Okay, so before we get out the big dummy load and really load this up, we'll have a bit of a test with the DC electronic load. Now, this thing will only go up to 100 watts, mind you, so we can only test certain parameters. But what we can do is in independent mode here, I've got the current limit set to 5 amps. Output in 20 volts at 5 amps, constant current mode. Let's have a quick look, see what we're getting. Wow, we pretty maxed this thing out already. Putting out 5 amps at 20 volts, and we're just about getting away with it on the DC load there. But yeah, it is putting out the 5 amps. All right, so if I go to parallel mode, Let's take the voltage down first, shall we? So I'm running in parallel mode because I want to just see if I can get the 10 amps out of it, but this DC load's only rated at 100 watts, so I can't do the full voltage. So I'm currently running at 11 volts, trying to hit the 10 amps. We're getting close. Yeah, yeah, there we go. 10 amps, beautiful. Pretty much maxing this thing out, but yeah, it'll give us our 10 amps, beautiful. Right, so I'm now gonna switch over to using the big dummy load because there's not much point in doing the preset tests on this because this power supply is outside the scope of what this can handle. So let's get out the big dummy load so we can really max this out. All right, now we're gonna load up our little power supply here. So we've brought in our lovely rear stat. This is our 12 ohm 10 amp rear stat. We've got it all hooked up. We've got a meter ready to measure the current and a meter ready to measure the voltage. Scope probe hooked up so we can keep an eye on the noise and the ripple. So we're gonna power up. Okay, so I've set the voltage to its max, which is 60 volts, although it lets you go up to 61. So I've set it for 61. All right, so I've set the current limit to one amp at the moment and you can see we are drawing just over one amp and we are putting out 11.9 volts which is pretty much confirmed there and you can see the noise here so this is on 0.1 volt per division 100 millivolts and we got roughly one two three four so 400 millivolts peak to peak noise at one amp Having a look at thermals, and it's not looking too bad. We're looking at around 30-ish. Rear stats glowing very nicely. Nice, okay. All right, so let's up the current. We're gonna see what we can do here. So let's go up to two amps. Okay, so note the ripple changing on the scope there. So at two amps, we've got 23.8 volts. Let's go to three amps. We've got 35 volts. Five, 5.1 is the most we can get. And we get our 61 volts, 5.1 amps. Confirmed here, 61 volts, nearest damn it. 5.1 amps. Yeah, quite, quite a lot more noise on there. Fans have not kicked in yet on this. All right, so we're looking at, yeah, about 35 on the power supply there. It's doing considerably better than our rear stat here, which is uh, sitting around 76 degrees now. It's sitting quite nicely, giving us 61 volts at 5.1 amps. There you go, can you hear the fans? Fans just kicked in briefly there, not for very long though. Looking at around 50 degrees inside the power supply. So a quick look around the back there. Around 35 on the exhaust there. And our rear stat is uh, sitting at around 86 degrees. It's doing a grand job. And yeah, this is fine. You can hear the fan kick in every so often, but that'll sit there quite nicely. Yeah, 61 volts, 5.1 amps. And you can see your noise. We got what, one, two, three, four, five, six, 600 millivolts peak to peak noise on that. Okay, successful test. The only thing I don't like is not having a on and off for the channels. So, 
when you're off you're off and when you're on you're on so it will indeed go up to 60 volts well 61 as we've seen but not everyone's going to be using it at that at full tilt so you might be wanting to do breadboards or microcontroller stuff so at 5 volts it's a little bit noisy for a 5 volt output 200 millivolts there peak to peak now i'm wondering if a little capacitor on the output might do the trick it's 100 microfarad long leg positive Yeah, look at that. There you go, that's done the trick. 100 microfarad cap across the output there. Let's quieten that right down. Look, I can barely hear it now. Now that's gonna be perfect for logic experiments. There you go, might even be all right for audio stuff. All you gotta do is put a little capacitor across the output. I wouldn't recommend leaving it like this though, to be fair. If you add that into your circuit, then that's going to be the best place for it rather than on the output. This is just for illustrative purposes. Just make sure whatever capacitor you're using is well above your power supply voltage, obviously. Okay, so another test I can do with the electronic load is use the dynamic test to check for step change in current. So I'm going to set it to flip between zero and five amps and I'm going to set it to do that at half a second intervals so it'll be too quick for the power supply display to keep up but I'm hoping I might be able to capture something on my scope in terms of under or overshoot and this is at five amps okay so this is running you can see the figures changing on the DC load the power supply display is not quite keeping up but what I'll do is I'm going to try and capture a still from my scope. There we go. There we go. So you can get a rough idea there of what we've captured in terms of over and under shoot. And this is uh, 100 millivolt intervals there. So we're what, 200 millivolts under, nearly 300 over, one millisecond intervals. So the whole thing takes place in just over one millisecond. Well, there you go, a few little successful tests there. I quite like it, the nice power. It's got a lovely display, nice and clear. The big shame for me is the not having individual on-off controls for each channel. That would have been nice. The only way to really make sure you don't put any unnecessary high voltage into something is to switch the power supply on and set the voltage before you put your banana plugs in to make sure you don't accidentally put 60 volts through your logic circuit because that wouldn't be bad. Now the version I've got here is the SPS 605 2KD and this is the 60 volt 5 amp. There's three other models available. There is a 30 volt 5 amp, there's a 30 volt 10 amp and there's a 120 volt 3 amp. I went for the 60 volt 5 amp because I think to me that's going to be the most useful to me in testing stuff and this is my most modern power supply that I have here. Most of mine are analog and they're mostly linear power supplies so be interesting to do a bit of work and a bit of testing with this one and see how it goes. Got nice big fans on the back there we heard them kick in you can hear them kick in but they're not too loud and we saw the temperatures were actually all right on it even at full load it didn't seem to go over 50 degrees on the thermal camera so seems to hold its own in that respect yeah brilliant nice power that's going to come in very handy on my bench for powering up things that i'm working on including my many other broken power supplies that i need to get around to fixing so many thanks to aliexpress for sending that dc bench power supply over for me to take a look at and don't forget to check out the video description down below for all the latest aliexpress discount codes and how to use them so thanks for watching i hope you've enjoyed taking a look at the dc bench power supply with me today it really was nice power as always massive thanks to everyone for watching sharing liking and subscribing if you do want to go ahead and hit the subscribe button it's always massively appreciated and helps to support the channel i'll be back soon with some more tech related videos but in the meantime take care and i'll see you on the next one